Okay, so today we're booked for a MMA uh, promotion. I've worked with them a few times, and the main goal here is to create some reels. So we're gonna be filming for about four or five hours. The kit is really simple. It's the camera on a tripod with the shotgun mic. That's it. So I'm gonna check in and get my badge. I have this gig because I did a documentary on my friend David, DZ Machine, and I asked for clearance from his promotion if I could film him. They said yes, and then I worked uh, just on a relationship from there. They liked the documentary, they said we could use uh, some work like that, and that's how the connection was established. Yes. What are you with Mi uh, Mitch? Mitch called me to uh, be part of the camera crew. Yes. It's the beginning of the night. People are just starting to come in. This is the undercard, so amateurs. Really, the only people in attendance are some family members and people who got there early. I was not selected to film the first few fights, which is why I'm coming in a little late. So I head over to, I guess you'd call it the video village area. Uh, there's a couple of videographers here tonight, so I'm getting my stuff ready to go. You can see I, I pulled the camera out uh, after I NATO'd on the handle and monitor. Ideally, I would like to pull the camera out without having to adjust anything. In order to do that, I need to get a much larger bag. And the difficult part is finding a tall bag that also has wheels. I've had backpacks and shoulder bags before and I will not go back. It needs to have wheels, and that's the only thing I can consider. So bags that have wheels aren't uh, tall enough to put the camera in. The camera measures about 10 inches, and most bags max out around nine. The one that I want is the Tenba Cinelux 24. They have two versions. One has wheels and is a little shorter at, I think it's nine inches. And then they have the Tenba 24 shoulder bag, no wheels, much taller. I think it's up to 12 inches vertical height, but it, it has straps that you could put in a little dolly. So it's a want, not a need at the moment, and ideally a stronger tripod too. Uh, the Sockler Flotec 75 looks great for extremely fast operation and uh, it's on the wish list. So my buddy Sam here just picked up the C200 and he has a 50 mil on it and asked if he could borrow one of mine. So I'm giving him a APS-C sensor 10 to 24 and he's gonna be using it. I think this is day one for him. So I've actually constructed my rig to look like the C200 rig, so. I'm, I'm looking at it right now saying, oh, what can I change? What can I do uh, to make it more, more efficient? Because the cinema, Canon cinema cameras and Sony's cinema cameras are just so efficient. Um, and it, it's the best design for, for what I think is uh, the majority of my work. I will have the Canon R7 coming in that will be on the gimbal. And then that way this camera can stay fully rigged up.
this is a much smaller cage than you would see in like the UFC or Bellator. And because of that, the sideline area is so much smaller. There's barely room for anybody. Here's the two-person commenting team. And then you have to account for at least three judges and the some of the uh, commissioners and photographers, videographers, the cameraman you can see up on the perch. And it, it's, it gets crowded so fast and everybody besides the camera team is more important than the camera team. Like you can't box out the commissioners. You can't box out the judges. So the videographers have to really get creative. You see the social media person on the left and then a photographer on the right. Space is extremely limited and you kind of poke in to try to find an area, get creative. And I think you just have to be okay with you're not going to get 100% of coverage at all times. things I've always wanted with a rig like this is to have the monitor be like an OEM LCD screen like on the FS7 or any of those types of traditional camera setups and I feel like I've achieved it um, I do have to put in these batteries which can get annoying but these are the LPE 6 NHs so they last quite a while I would say that setup runs maybe like two hours so it's pretty good and it swivels but I would love for it to fold in I haven't figured that part out but I feel like this has been mastered so originally this monitor mount from Nitsi traditionally goes up and you bend the monitor forwards and backwards so I threw it on the side and there was two um, Allen screws here I don't know if that's what you call it but this was also here. The problem was, is when I would move it, it's not able to support this lateral weight. So after a few turns, it would get flimsy and kind of fall, and then I'd have to go back into my bag, get the right Allen key, and tighten it. So what I've done is I used some old parts, took out the Allen key, and put in this thumb screw. So now if I adjust it, I can just easily tighten it. And that type of rotation is very valuable because when I'm filming and I get the interview frame set up, the producer sometimes will come back here with his phone and say, oh, let me take a picture to show the person in front of the camera. And I say, no worries, they can stay there. Let me show this to them. The image will flip on the small HD and then it comes back. So you see how this is like a little loose? Should be able to do this with one hand. Just tightened and now it's tight again. The other thing that I adjusted was that thumb screw right there. So normally when I would move this, it would hit. So filed off a couple millimeters and now it rotates without any friction.
So as far as the schedule coming up, I have two to three corporate events over the next two months, which is really nice because those are full day rates. Um, some of them are extremely easy, like uh, a full day of B-roll on a gimbal. No interviews, nothing. Other ones are recording full sessions for a day and a half with a B camera operator who I'm hiring. And traditionally, I have always said no to retainer clients. That goes against what a lot of people suggest now. But I, in my experience, I've found that the cool jobs that come in are spur of the moment and you need to have availability. Availability is such a big asset. And if you get approached with one of those and, they, and then you remember, oh, I work Tuesday and Wednesday every week at this place, I can't go, sorry. One, you missed out on uh, an opportunity for a gig. Two, you missed out on an opportunity for increasing your network. And I always like to have schedule flexibility. So I have taken on a retainer client. Uh, I just signed the contract. The reason I accepted that, pay was really good. And um, it's a deadline based delivery. So they give you uh, a number of deliverables that you have to complete by a certain day and you figure that out. If you wanna to try to do all of it on one day and coast for the other 29 days, cool. It doesn't matter to them. You have to just deliver by a certain timeline. So I signed that a few days ago. I'll get the content brief uh, coming up in a few days and I'll begin my three month contract. So that is, uh, I didn't think I would ever do that, but the situation works perfectly. So, um, I'll make another video about that, absolutely. Uh, and it, it's it's from a client who I worked with before. It's it's kind of one of those, oh, how did you get that? You have to have experience in order to get the job. Well, how do I get the job if I don't have experience? It, it's one of those where you, how do I say this? You got experience from doing a small portion of what they could have hired you for. And because you knocked that out of the park, they said, oh wow, this is really good. You over delivered. Can we talk to you about something bigger? So if I ever get a job, it goes without saying you wanna do your best, but you really, really wanna do your best because um, sometimes you're not just working on that job. You're working on all the future jobs that might come up and they offer to you. I've had so many times where someone says, you weren't the first choice, you weren't the second choice, but those people are unavailable, um, either because they have their schedules locked down or whatever, and you are available and you're ready. So you have all the equipment ready to go. And that's how a lot of work opportunities happen. I have to put the camera on to manual focus. I would love for it to be autofocus, but C70 isn't that good in low light. And also you have a giant fence in front of you that is trying to uh, dissuade your autofocus from focusing on the right thing. So um, 24 to 70, 2.8 is fine in here. I actually think that 18 to 35 by Sigma would be more appropriate. And uh, here I am sharing the ring with Alex to the right. He's another DP in South Florida. And you can see the frame guides on my monitor. The C70 is actually creating those so that I can record the entire 16 by nine image, but I have op an opacity mask uh, for the middle vertical nine by 16 area. So when I bring that into uh, Final Cut, it, I see the full image and then I just crop it. And I don't know if you know this, but when they hit the bell, I thought it was a digital sound, but it's an actual metal bell that they hit. So good to know.
six and a half hours later we're done exhausting but super fun it's it's really cool to to mix up corporate work and covering fighting and um next week i just got contracted to cover rolling loud in miami so that came from a friend of a friend and i'm really stoked because i would not have got that on my own accord and that's exactly why at the end i like to just say hi to all the people whether they're part of cameras or not or in production see what projects they're working on let them know what i got going on and then who knows maybe i can bring them into something or or they can bring me in and it's just nice to to keep people aware that you do what you do and it's good to know what they do because there's a lot of times where some a specialist needs to be brought in that and i don't have those skills but someone i know does so keep building the network it's always a good thing to do and um and then beyond that the rolling loud thing yeah it just kind of popped into my lap it actually came from a friend that i tried to hire on the production scale was getting larger and larger and we needed another dp they submitted their quote to me at the end of it it we didn't need another person so unfortunately that couldn't bring them on but cut to two months later they threw my name into the hat to be part of the media team for rolling loud so i'm beyond stoked super happy that that's happening because i've done a couple music things and rolling loud's kind of you know at the top so um so to be a part of it and then uh beyond that i'm gonna go home and make sure i offload all the footage because i've i've formatted cards before when i shouldn't have um so i'll let you guys know what the the next gig i get is but this one's done